Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for HYC 2020. This is not our normal HYC, but what about 2020 has been normal? We said this year was going to be the greatest year of revival that we have ever seen. We said we were going to have 2020 vision in 2020. Well, boy, it's tough to look on the positive side of 2020 because we all want to be negative. But can I tell you that I believe that this year we did see some things a little more clearly. We clearly saw that we need God in our lives, in our country, in our world. And I truly believe that the prophetic word that was given at HYC 2019, that this year would be the greatest year of revival, I believe that word to be true. Through virtual services, through virtual Zoom, P7 Bible studies, CMI get-togethers, we have seen thousands of people brought to the Lord, one saved, baptized, received the Holy Ghost. We have seen thousands this year that we probably never would have reached in 2020 had it not been for us going virtual. Now, I know it was not the same. We didn't get camp. We didn't get master rally. And now we don't get in-person HYC. But you know what? The greatest year of revival doesn't necessarily mean that we're all together. I believe that this year has been the greatest year of reviving our spirits. I know that it seems like it's been a hard year. We have been faced with challenge after challenge after challenge, shutdown after quarantine after shutdown after quarantine. But you know, through all of this, there have been some of the greatest opportunities that has ever been given to the church. Yes, the church faced some crazy obstacles this year, and many still are. But I'll tell you, as long as we have had God at the head of this boat, leading us through these stormy waters, I'm telling you, we've been okay, and we're going to be okay. I'm looking forward to this service tonight. I am honored to welcome Pastor Art Wilson, Sister Andrea Lehman, and Brother Jerry Zimmerman, ministering to us in this service tonight. Leading us in worship, Brother Anthony Gonzalez and the Michigan District Youth Praise Team. This is going to be a fantastic night. Clear away the distractions that are surrounding you right now. And let's get in touch with God. And let's have revival. Welcome, Michigan District, to Holiday Youth Convention 2020. We are so happy that you're joining in and participating with us this evening. But before we move any further in, into any worship or any preaching and impartation of the word, we always want to take a moment for prayer. We want to take a moment to acknowledge God and to ask Him to move the way that He really wants to move in our lives. Hallelujah. Oftentimes we approach prayer with a lackadaisical attitude where we don't really know which direction we're heading in. God, you're good. God, you're worthy. And those things are true. But there comes a time when we have to focus our efforts in prayer. We have to know exactly what we need from God in this moment. And as I was praying and asking the Lord, God, what word do you want to give to the young people that are going to be watching this? How do you want to start things, God? What's, what's the resounding word that you have for our generation in this time? And I felt the Lord nudge me and ask them, where are you at? Where are you at right now? And I'm not even just talking physically, because you could be in your car, you could be at church, you could be at home. There's a million places you could be. You could be at work. Where are you at right now? And then he directed my attention to Moses. And he said, you know, after there was this great victory that Moses had led his people through. And then he finds himself in this place of isolation. It sounds very familiar to a lot of us right now. A place of isolation on top of the mountain, alone with God. Yes. That was where we found Moses. And after that time with God, though, Moses comes down from the mountain only to find the people of God down in the valley, distracted and worshiping idols. 
That's where they were at. So I ask you tonight, before we move any further, where are you at? Not physically, but spiritually. Because there's some of us that have truly taken the time and we've, we've given it our best effort and we've been on that mountain. We've, we've been seeking after the presence of God. But there's some people that I feel like the Lord is trying to reach for right now and is saying, you are finding yourself distracted and worshiping idols right now. And then I felt him tug me a little further into the word and say, where will you be when I come back for my church? Because we don't have time to be pretending that we have time. We don't. Where will you be when he comes back for his church? Will you find yourself like Moses in his presence, lingering at his feet, just seeking his face? Seeking his face means to know him, not just the blessings of his hand. Where will you find yourself? Or are you finding yourself down below, distracted and worshiping idols? And I realize that this, this isn't necessarily the hype that you think you might want before we start a service. But I can assure you in my spirit, I know for sure that this is the word that we need. Amen. We need to know where we stand with God. And we need to know that one choice can shift our perspective, can shift where we are to where we need to be. And whatever sin, whatever things may be clouding us right now, it takes one drop of his blood to move us to that place where we need to be with him. So before we move it any further into worship, I wanna take a moment and just speak the name of Jesus over the Michigan District Youth. If you would join with me wherever you're at, in the name of Jesus right now, we pray for the young people in Michigan District. God, you see each and every one of them that are watching right now Jesus you see where they're at mentally you see where they're at emotionally you see where they're at spiritually God you see the struggle the depression and the bondage that people have faced and gone through but Lord in the name of Jesus we want to speak against those things God I bind the spirit of depression that has come against our generation in this last few months God I speak against the bondage that is trying to hold us back I speak against the worshiping of those idols and those distractions that have totally shifted us away from your presence, God. I pray right now that a spirit of revelation would be loosed. God, that your spirit of truth would reach through the screen, God, would transcend the times. Lord, that whoever watches this, whenever they watch it, wherever they watch it, they would feel your anointing. They would feel your presence. They would feel a lifting of the bondage and a lifting of the oppression. They would feel that they could go from the living in that dark, condemning place, God, to looking up, to seeking you to reaching for you, God. There's no more time to be living in the pit of despair. There's no more time to be fooling around. It's time to shift our perspective, shift our focus, and reach for Jesus tonight. In Jesus' name. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I'm looking up, I'm looking up, I'm looking up. I'm looking up, I'm looking up, I'm looking up, I'm looking up, I'm looking up. Creator of the universe, Hallelujah. the one who never sleeps, the ruler over all the earth, is taking care of me. Here now, yes, my shelter, my shelter from the heat of day. Protector in the night Oh yes No matter what may come my way 
your hands. Lift up your heart. Lift up your worship. You are great, God. You are mighty. You are awesome, God. There is nobody like our Savior. There's nobody like Jesus. Why don't you begin to lift up that name right now? The name above every name. The name above every name. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. I give you glory. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I give honor to the leadership of the Michigan District and my pastor, Rob Fisher. It is a tremendous honor to share my heart with you for a few moments tonight. In the book of Ch Joel chapter 2, we see a severe famine taking place in Judah. Along with the great drought, the description uh, of this passage resembles that of the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem during described in the book of Lamentations. In verse 4, it states that there will be great destruction, a severe famine, crops being destroyed, trees withering, and, and families being torn apart. And in verse 6, it states a great nation without number will come upon thee. Tonight, I can I tell somebody who is watching who has felt like the enemy has come into your home? has come into your body, has come into your life. You've lost joy. You've lost passion. You've lost your dance and your shout. Preachers have spoken a word of faith into your life, but nothing has come out of it. Let me speak to someone tonight who thinks their situation is dried up and there is no life left in it. The seeds that you've been planting, you've been sowing, have fallen on barren soil. It's dried up and it's dead and your cup doesn't run over any longer. I have a word for this district. I see an abundance of rain. Rain now. has been considered a powerful resource throughout the Bible. We have come to understand that rain brings new life. Yes. It's refreshing and it restores. And I believe that there is truly a new rain about to fall on this state. Yes. Enough to match that of the former rain and the latter rain at the same time. Hallelujah. You see, Israel has low rainfall in its soil is mainly composed of limestone and sandstone, so it is not easy to even find water underground. This is why the historical sites of Israel include many reservoirs which were used to collect rain water for drinking. Thus, rain was directly correlated with the livelihood of the people in Israel. Their survival was threatened when it did not rain. Israel's climate is characterized by two distinct seasons, uh, a rainy season from about October to April and a summer from May to September. And the rain that falls in October and November when the rainy season starts is the former rain. And the rain which falls in March and April when the rainy season ends is the latter rain. The former and the latter rain which comes at the right time for Israel is a blessing from God. And in Joel, we see a great famine and a great drought in which God sends a great rain. All right. The former rain and the latter rain at the same exact time. In Joel 1 and 4, we see a great army that has come and destroyed their spirits. It's come into their families' homes and caused destruction and chaos and a drought to take place. And it's destroyed their faith in God. If if we use this mindset in this passage, the former rain and the latter rain falling at the exact same time can be interpreted as a powerful outpouring of the Spirit, greater restoration of faith. There's miracles, signs, greater gifts of the Spirit, yes. and a great revival. Yes. I Hallelujah. know for a fact that there are those who have been praying for just a small sign to show that restoration, show healing, show the Holy Ghost to fall in their family's life, just to sprout up a little bit, showcasing the truth of what the Lord has said to them. You have been searching, you have been fasting, you have been praying, crying out to the Lord for just a small answer. God Give me something. Just right. give me a little bit of a sign. You have been planting seeds over and over again, but you feel as if the seeds of which you have planted have died or dried up over time, and you will not see a harvest come out of it. Some of you are furious that nothing is taking place and have begun to even doubt if there really is a God because he hasn't been answering your prayers. Please do not 
give up. Right. Because though it feels like you have been trapped in a desert and not one single seed has begun to sprout, not one single seed has begun to take root, I see an abundance Woo. of rain. The rain that will begin to fall is both the former rain and the latter rain, which this is what it means that we are entering into a season of great revival, yeah. a season of restoration, a season of healings, both emotionally and physically. We are entering into a new season of faith in the church as a whole. I see an abundance of rain. Hallelujah. I see the rain on the horizon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We will begin to see such a marvelous and great harvest take place. I believe that. We will begin to see great healings take place. The fields are not going to stay dried up any longer. We won't be in a famine. The seeds that you've been planting, the, 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 the prayers you've been praying, the, the nights you've been fasting, the days you've been fasting, the, the, the times where you've been interceding, they're going to take root because of the rain. Hallelujah. And I'm going to co conclude tonight with this. Don't give up. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18 that Elijah asked his servant to go look off into the distance. He didn't tell him what to look for. He's, he just said, go to the distance. I need you to look for something, a sign during a three and a half year drought. Go look for any small sign. The Bible says that the servant went back and forth six different times, six times. Elijah prayed six times, sent the servant six times. The servant came back six times and said, there is nothing. There's nothing. I haven't seen anything. And Elijah prayed again. Yeah. Hear me tonight. Don't you dare stop praying. Oh, don't you dare stop fasting. Don't you dare give up on your harvest. You may be one prayer away from your miracle. You may be one prayer away from your personal revival. You may be one prayer away from restoration. Don't stop now because what happens next is Elijah put his face into the dirt and he prayed again. He sent his servant one more time and his servant came back saying that he's seen a cloud off in the distance the size of a man's hand the servant hadn't seen a rain cloud in years but once he's seen that cloud he didn't know what he was looking for but once he's seen that cloud you may not know what you're looking for. You may not know what your sign is going to look like. You may not know how big or how small it is, but once you see it, you'll know that's my promise. That's my dream. That's my healing. Oh, that's my brother or daughter coming out of that wheelchair. That's my son and my daughter coming home. That's healings. That's my seed taking root. Hear me right now. I believe this. This is radical, this is bold, but that's a hundred soul revival for your church. All right. That's a 5,000 soul revival for this district. That's 10,000, that's 100,000, that's 1 million souls. That's 9.9 .9 million soul revival for the Michigan district Hallelujah. and his kingdom. Hallelujah. I believe that. Once his servant seen that cloud, he knew it was the exact thing that Elijah was praying for. And when the servant told Elijah what he seen, he said, tell Ahab there is an abundance of rain coming. Who needs this tonight? Who needs to hear your miracles on its way? Do not give up. 
There is an abundance of rain. All right, and why don't we lift our hands for just a few more moments? Why don't we just ask God into our hearts and into our minds? God, I've been praying, I'm tired, it's coming. God, I haven't seen the science coming. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, keep going. There is an abundance of rain, it's coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. And I will trust in you, Jesus. I will trust in you. Help me sing it now. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Sing it again. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yes, Lord. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord is my 
presence of the Lord. Come on, sing it now. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. One more time. And I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Sing 
the veil is torn and the door swings wide I see glory yes I run inside the throne room before you I find
We'll praise the Lord, everyone, tonight. Why don't we just worship the Lord right now, no matter where we are all over the Michigan district. Let's just lift up the Lord right now. Let's flood the entire state with a praise unto the Lord. Let's charge the atmosphere with the glory and power of God. Somebody help me lift up the Lord right now. How many young people out there know how worthy he is tonight? How many young people out there came to praise him with all your heart? No matter where you are, you may be in your living room, you may be in your youth group, you may be in your church, but just lift him up right now. God's getting ready to do something great tonight. Lord, we love you tonight. We worship you tonight. We praise you tonight. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I am so honored to be invited to speak this year's Holiday Youth Convention 2020. What a powerful service we have already had, the powerful move of God, the awesome introduction, Sister Andrea, and the incredible message, Brother Zimmerman, and all that has happened with our praise and worship team. This place has been absolutely charged with the power of God, and I'm so glad to have been here tonight, and I just am thankful for the invitation. I'm thankful for my district, my district board that allowed me to be here. Of course, our incredible district youth department. I just think we need to give them a great big hand, a round of applause. And our awesome director, Brother Hopper, let's praise the Lord for him. Amen. We're just so excited for what God is doing in Michigan. Amen. And I've seen all the effort that this conference took all of the work that's behind the scenes. I, I just, the half had not been told of all that goes on to make these streaming services possible on this level. Amen. So I am just excited. I agree with Brother Zimmerman. I think God is going to do something incredible for the Michigan District. We're getting ready to have revival. Amen. Well, I want to challenge you tonight in our 2020 Holiday Youth Convention. I want to minister out of the book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse number 23. Matthew 11 and verse number 23. I so appreciate my pastor, one of our Michigan District pastors, Bishop Henson, and his awesome influence on my life, and all of those that are praying for me back home my wife, Bethany, sent me a text and said, praying for you. Amen. So I so appreciate. She's my partner in crime. Amen. So I so appreciate all of the support. But in Matthew eleven twenty three, 23, I want to read a very, very interesting passage of Scripture for Holiday Youth Convention 2020. This has been really bothering me, and I feel like the Lord has given us a word for this year. The Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty three, 23, and thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. This is Jesus talking. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Do you understand why this has bothered me tonight? I just want to focus on this one passage of Scripture, and we're going to pray. The Lord said, if the mighty works which have been done in Capernaum had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have remained until this day. 
I've got a word tonight for the Michigan District. Title of this message, Holiday Youth Convention 2020, is a simple one. It's time to step up. Somebody say that with me. It's time to step up. If you believe in revival, I want you to say it with me right now. It's time to step up. I believe that everything that has happened in 2020 has led us to this point. I believe everything we've dealt with, and I'm going to talk about it before we get done, has led us to this moment. I believe that our world is being positioned and they are ready for global revival. But the question tonight is, are there any young people that are ready to step up to the challenge? Y'all ready to have church tonight? I want you just to pray with me right now and say, Lord, help me to step up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray an anointing all over Michigan right now, and the challenge would go forward. As we go into this message, Lord, anoint me, anoint us to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church, and may we never be the same again in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands wherever you're at. Wherever you're at, clap your hands unto the Lord because God's getting ready to do something awesome. Amen. It is time to step up. We are living in unbelievable times. 2020 has been nothing short of historic. We've dealt with a global pandemic we call the coronavirus, which led us into social chaos, political chaos, racial chaos, economic chaos, and on and on and what a year. Who would have thought at the end of HYC 2019 that when we stepped into the 2020 HYC, it would be online? Who would have thought that that is what was in our future? But truly something is happening right now in our world. And our world seems distracted with all the chaos that's going on. They seem almost uninterested in anything else but self. It reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah looked uninterested, hopeless, impossible to reach. No one looked interested in serving God when you read your Bible about Sodom and Gomorrah. But I've got a word from the Lord for the Michigan District. Don't judge a book by its cover. You would be shocked right now tonight who in your school, on your job, in your neighborhood actually wants this gospel that we enjoy. You would be blown away if you could see what was going on on the inside of the people that we see every day. There are young people in our midst. They are in the most horrible situations, and everybody has wrote them off. But God wants us to reach them tonight, and God has has faith in them tonight. It is time to step up. If you would have saw, if you would have saw our world in, you would have seen our world in, let's say, 1990, 1988, 1987, and backwards, Bethany and I, we really wouldn't have looked like somebody you would have thought would have wanted this. We really didn't look like the kind of people that would be interested in the kingdom. See, I was a football player. She was a cheerleader. We were 100% worldly. We didn't go to church. We didn't know about a walk with God. We looked like we were happy. We looked like, I hope somebody hears me tonight, we looked like we were fulfilled and we were not interested in the kingdom of God. But you can't judge a book by its cover. 
And when this gospel was presented to us, everything changed in our lives. And here I am today telling you, you can't judge a book by its cover. And all those people that you come in contact, who knows which one of them are interested in serving the Lord God Almighty. Who knows what is going on on the inside. The Lord is calling this next generation. I want to talk a little bit to our millennial generation. I want to talk to, is it Generation Z? What else are they going to come up with? I want to talk to you and I want to challenge you. I believe that Jesus has given this generation, this millennial generation, this Generation Z, I believe that Jesus has given you a code that we have not seen before. I believe that Jesus has given you answers that we haven't seen before. I believe with inside some of you young people is the exact solution to the global revival that we have been praying for, the global revival that we have been looking for. I believe that God put it inside of you and it's time for it to come out. Wow. This generation has the ability to work with technology like we have never seen before. I got a grandchild, and I'm preaching HYC. My grandchild walked up and grabbed my tablet, and in a few moments, three years old, figured it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. What is going on with these generations? God has put something in you where you have an ability to navigate technology. And we didn't know at first what that could turn into until a pandemic. When everything was shut down and everything was closed up and all of my generation and the generations before me didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden our young people stepped up and said, why don't we stream? Why don't we go ahead and transmit this along the airways? I don't know how to transmit along the airways. You know who's spearheading revival in 2020? Our next generation. They have sent this, I feel the Holy Ghost. They have sent this revival on the airways. And we used to reach thousands, but now we're reaching millions. Because within you is secrets to unlock global revival like we have never seen before. Somebody clap your hands because it's time to step up. Who knows what's getting ready to happen? I used to think that our generation had it going on. Woo, we, we took this to another level. We went to reaching thousands and building churches that seated thousands. Do you know that one streaming can reach 100,000 people like that? That's bigger than the size of NAYC. And this generation knows how to do it. Somebody said in Matthew 24, 14, I believe it was Jesus when he said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We used to wonder, how are we going to cover the world so quickly? And now we understand that you have the code to cover the world quickly. When you step up, the world is going to be reached. I'm challenging our millennials, and I'm challenging our Generation Z. It is time to step up. I feel the Holy Ghost. I hope somebody's making some noise wherever you are in social media right now tonight. Jesus said, the end time will be identical to Lot's day. Jesus said, as in the days of Lot. So he wants us to understand what you see happening in Sodom, you will see happening in the end time. What you see going on in Sodom, you will see happening in the end time. So if we want to know about the last days, we simply need to study Lot's day. 
Jesus said, the key theme to the disaster of Lot's day was Sodom died because the people that should have stepped up did not step up. Did not Jesus say, if Sodom had a seen what Capernaum saw, Sodom would have remained. In other words, nobody showed them what Capernaum seen. Can you imagine that? Sodom could have remained. Sodom could have remained. The issue was not Sodom. We always focus on this. I'm apostolic. I preach against Sodom. We talk about Sodom all the time. We talk about the gross sin that took place in Sodom. We talk about the evil of Sodom. We talk about how Sodom was rebellious. But Jesus said they would have repented if someone would have stepped up. I'm going somewhere. I preach against Sodom. We all preach against Sodom. We yell about Sodom. We condemn Sodom. We throw Sodom into hell. But Jesus said the problem was not Sodom. I want this to sink in in 2020 because we've got to get this, young people. The problem was not Sodom. There were people there that did not step up. I feel the Lord. Wanting to tell this HYC 2020, you are not at your school. You are not at your work. You are not in your college or university or on your social platforms to hide. You didn't hear me. You're not at your school. You're not at your job. You're not in your social, social platforms to blend in. God didn't put you there to compromise. You are supposed to step up and make a difference because who knows who's sitting next to you in your school that is yearning for what you have that would change their life forever. He literally told us, if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. All they needed was someone to step up. What was Lot doing? Nothing. Where was Lot? Because if we hadn't heard from God, if Jesus hadn't pulled the cover off the rest of the story, we would have blamed Sodom and gave Lot a license. But Jesus comes on the scene and says, uh, let me tell you the rest of the story. Sodom didn't have a preacher. Sodom didn't have a soul winner. Sodom didn't have anybody to knock their doors. Sodom didn't have anybody to send them a message of encouragement. Sodom didn't have somebody that would do mighty works in front of them. So what was Lot doing? Genesis 19 and 1, the Bible tells us, and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. He knew how to be churchy. Y'all didn't hear me. He knew how to dress. He knew how to worship. He knew when to say amen. He knew when to stand up. He knew when to clap, but he sure didn't make a difference. But when there was a spiritual moment, he knew how to do it. But any other time, he was sitting and doing nothing for his generation. He probably had a lot of friends. You get a lot of friends when you compromise. You get, you get a lot of friends when you blend in. But that is not why God 
put us there. God put us there to make a difference and to represent him. And God expects us to represent him. Sitting at the gate. Somebody, can I have a chair? I'm feeling like illustration time. Literally, this is Lot. Thank you, Brother Anthony. This is Lot. You come to Sodom, you see Lot sitting at the gate. Everybody knows Lot. Everybody sees Lot. What's Lot doing? Sitting and doing nothing. Watching people come and people go. He's seeing and he's being seen. He's not controversial because he's not making a difference. He's just sitting at the gate. He's just sitting day and night. He's sitting at the gate. People can see him and he can see them, but he's not making a difference. He's just sitting at the gate. And Jesus said if somebody had done something miraculous, everybody in that place would have turned around. But not Lot. He's just sitting. What are you doing with your Facebook page? What's going on on your Instagram page? How's TikTok and Snapchat? And, and I had to get all of these because I don't have a clue. But what are you doing? Are you just sitting on a page seeing and being seen? When was the last time you said something about Jesus? On, I feel the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you got up and made a stand in a place at a gate? You know that a gate is kind of like a social page. Everybody can see you and you can see them. But if you don't do something, if you don't make a difference, if you don't step up and step in, nothing will happen in your area of influence. Sounds just like social media. If it was 2020, he'd probably have a full load of friends on his page. You couldn't even get any more friends. He was maxed out. That's Lot. But where was his burden for the people that he could see? Jesus said, our day will be like Lot's day. What we normally do is we start preaching about the sin of our day. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. will be like the sin in Lot's day. And I understand that, and I believe it. But let me turn the coin a little bit and tell you, what about the church? Are the people in our day going to be like the Lot's in that day? Or are we going to change things and make a difference? Because Lot didn't move in his day. Jesus said it will be like Lot's day. We need to turn that around and accept the challenge tonight in HYC 2020. Every young person that's watching this, every young person that's listening to this, we need to turn that coin around and say, no, I am going to make a difference. I am going to step up for my generation. I'm going to use the gifts that God has given me, and I am going to do something for the Lord. We see a sense of urgency. In Lot's day, the angels were there. The angels showed up to get Lot out and his family. I wonder what would have happened if there was revival going on at that time. But the Bible tells us it was just the opposite. The angels had to drag Lot out. Genesis nineteen fifteen. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy daughters, thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up, back up. 
what happened? The angels rose up in the morning. When the morning arose, the 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 morning the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot saying, Arise, take a, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did Lot go to bed? Did Lot put on his jammies and go to bed in the midst of an apocalypse? Wait a minute, wait a minute. When the morning arose, morning time, wait a minute. Then the angels ha hastened him saying, get up, arise. Did Lot go to bed with angels in his house talking about the apocalypse? And then, <laughs> is this book telling us that Lot went to bed during the end of the world? How do you go to sleep with angels in your house telling you the world is coming to an end? And you say, oh, well, that's horrible. I, I'm, I, it's, it's bedtime. You guys it, help yourself to the fridge. The, the angels actually sat and said, I think he's going to bed. I guess we'll... He's sleeping during the apocalypse. Sleeping in Sodom with angels in his house, he went to bed. You know, we thought when the coronavirus hit in the beginning of the year, many of us thought that that was going to be a huge wake-up call. And, and for the first few months, it was. People were calling me that I never, people that hadn't been to church were calling me. They, it, prayer, and there was panic for a few months. But then they got used to it. And we didn't get the calls anymore. And we actually had people that, looking for ways not to come to church in a pandemic than to fill up. Y'all not hearing me. You, we, we started what we thought was going to be a wake-up call. I'm concerned if we've learned and, and the shock factor is gone, and now what we thought would wake us up actually put us to sleep. But God is saying to us in 2020 at HYC, somebody wake up, somebody step up. There's a generation to reach. I wish somebody would clap your hands right now. There is a generation to reach. There's a community to reach. It is time to have revival. The conclusion of this, I'm done. At the conclusion of this, we come to verse 16, and the Bible tells us, and while they, 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 they had to wake him up, and after waking him up, the Bible tells us that he lingered. The men laid hold upon his hand, and the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city by himself. He didn't have a harvest to bring with him. They God sent enough angels to get Lot out, his wife, two daughters. Because no one stepped up. Jesus said, as in the days of Lot, it's going to be that way in the last day. We, we focus that on Sodom but we should also focus on the fact that he said the days of Lot. There was things that Lot did not do. 
we do not want the days of Lot. We want the days of revival. We want the days in this last hour where somebody steps up because I believe that this generation coming has the key that we've been looking for. I feel the Holy Ghost. I believe that there's some young people that know what I'm talking about right now. You're knowing it because you felt it. God has put inside of you a desire for revival, a calling on your life. I come to tell you in the Holy Ghost right now at HYC 2020. 2020 isn't over yet. And we're going to make 2020 our step up year. Yes. We're getting ready to step up. I want some young people, wherever you at, I just want you to put your hands in the air. And I want you to let that calling be renewed in you. Some of you got some callings that... You just think nobody will understand because it's so unusual. Can I tell you, I thought years ago when young people told me, I think we can reach the world on the internet. I thought, nah, I don't know about that. I'm open, but I don't know. Can I tell you, I know now. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. What am I saying? I'm saying within you is a prophetic code. God's already talking to you. He's already getting you ready to reach your generation. And you don't have to compromise to do it. You don't have to walk away from separation to do it. You can do it and be successful in the calling of God. Somebody's got to step up. Your school's waiting on you. Your neighborhood's waiting on you. Your university's waiting on you. Your job is waiting on you. Your friends are waiting on you. It's time to stop blending in. It's time to make a difference. Yes. Oh, in Jesus' name. Somebody begin to worship him. I'm praying over the whole district right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every young person that can hear me. Every young person that can see me. Every young person that's got a calling on your life, I'm calling you out tonight. I'm saying step up. It's time to step up. It's time to, God's going to be there for you. God's going to anoint you. God's going to appoint you. God's going to use you mightily. Lift your voice and say, let that anointing come on me tonight. Let that anointing come on me tonight. Let that anointing, Jesus, I want to reach my generation. In Jesus' name. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. And I will and trust him in his presence daily live oh we love you jesus we love you jesus oh sing all to jesus i surrender Thank you. 
Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amo hositi abahasataya. Oh, yes, Lord. The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around yes. For the Spirit of the Lord is here Sing that again the atmosphere is changing now for the Spirit, for the Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, yes, the evidence is all around. Oh, that the Spirit, that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Sing overflow, overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love surround us, Jesus. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surround us. Sing overflow, overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love.
The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is. 